Hi, I'm Jack Farr. I'll be discussing some updates on fresh osteochondral allograft with Brian Cole. Brian, for your larger lesions, what are your treatments today and what could they be tomorrow? Yeah, so specifically related to allografts for large lesions, um, there are situations where a round cylinder just doesn't uh, suffice in terms of the anatomy and these larger lesions, as we've often discussed, tend to be more degenerative in nature, so not everything lives as a circle. So again, respect comorbidities, but now there's new instrumentation that is very easy to use. I mean, you and I have both done these sort of uh, uh, snowman or MasterCard type graphs, which has its own pearls and pitfalls, but can be a real challenge. One, getting two graphs from a hemicondyle can be a challenge from a technical perspective. And two, uh, when you're putting them in, avoiding dislodging one versus the other, or, or you know, violating or amputating one plug can be a real issue. So using this BioUni concept, which uh, Arthrex has designed this instrumentation largely from their uh, previous uni design, uh, has helped tremendously in terms of creating an oval graft that is almost perfect every time. So I think it will allow those who are a little bit more intimidated to uh, treat lesions which are truly degenerative but relatively localized, uh, give them the, arm them with something that they can now treat these with a reproducible technique, which is what we all need. And what's nice is, from a historical standpoint, this is very similar to what has been done for many years as a freehand osteochondral shell allograft, which I have done. They do work, but technically it is so tedious yeah. and is so time consuming, and yet now we have instrumentation that allows us to do it in a timely fashion, reproducible with excellent fit. At yeah, the end. It's, it's in set as some of those I imagine you did were surface cuts, right? Yes. Now this is an inset graph, which there's, you can't get any better stability. There's new availability now of pre-cut plugs. What are your thoughts about those? The problem is we've had our graft availability, so uh, the ability for a tissue processing agency to actually provide multiple plugs from a single condyle intuitively is an excellent idea. One has to be mindful of that you might not have perfect information going in, so if you're going to use pre-cut plugs, I think it's fine as long as you're very confident as to what you're going to be getting into for your index lesion. So if you have good information, I think from an economic perspective and from a resource point of view and the relative scarcity of, of, of donors, I think it's the responsible place to go. The caveat is just make sure that you know your defect size because you're only going to have one of these available at the time. Yeah, that's important. I think that it goes back to MRIs. I mean, they're great to get you into the knee, to yeah. look for pathology. They're not great for sizing. So many times they undersize the lesions I see. And then many of these patients you see have been referred by other physicians who maybe scoped them maybe a year ago or six right. months ago. If it's more than a year, I'm, I'm really not confident on that the sizing hasn't expanded or, over and, that time Yeah, frame. and it's not only size, it's other, you know, they could be menisectomized. It's very easy to underrepresent what was done from a menisectomy point of view. They could have lots of meniscus remaining yet be functionally menisectomized, and you may not pick up on that until you go in. So. I think reinitiating an index uh, arthro arthroscopy is not uh, not a bad idea, especially if this much time has passed or the information that you have is not particularly reliable. Yeah, I think it's so important to get that across to the patient because they say, I don't want another scope, right. but you want to have the, the definitive surgery performed correctly. Right. Thank you.